This video is going to explain how to use the SPIFS filing system in place of an SD card on the ESP8266. You can use any ESP device to implement this SPIFS filing system and the advantage is you no longer need the SD card hardware and you can rewrite to files on the device itself. This diagram depicts the memory map of the 8266 devices, either the standard variant or the pro variant. The standard version has 3 megabytes of unused flash memory and the pro variant has 15 megabytes of unused flash space. Uh, in both implementations, the inclusion of the fs.h library, the SPI flash filing system has been implemented to utilize that space to enable you to read and write files. The diagram at the bottom depicts the, in a linear way, the memory map of the device where the sketch normally exists from left to right along that memory line, some space allocated for over the air updating, and then the free space or the unused space that is then allocated to the filing system. And then you'll see other storage areas where Wi-Fi parameters, configuration parameters and EEPROM data is held. So in the serial peripheral interface flash filing system, it, it, you'll note that the file system objects and the file objects are broadly similar. You can begin reading check whether files exist, open, close files, remove files, uh, seek random access, seek a particular position in a file, check the position in file, check sizes, close, print, read and write. Um, there's a reasonable correlation with the commands. In fact, for most programs, it's almost, and I'll, ex I'll give you an example in a moment, almost trivial to make the uh, transition between the SD filing and S on SPIFS filing systems. Here I've included two example programs. On the left hand side is a simple program that writes data, all the letters of the alphabet and the value of pi to a file, closes the file, opens the file, reads it, reads it back and prints the results on the serial port. On the right hand side is exactly the same program implemented for the SPIFS filing system and I've highlighted those areas in yellow that are different. In, in most instances the difference is almost trivial and it takes just a few moments to make the transition between the SD card filing and SPIFS filing systems. Just include the different library for SPIFs, fs.h. Uh, the begin object, SPIFs.begin, is clearly different from SD begin for the SD card. Instead of file write, it's a parameter called a or append. You can read, write, append. Those are the four basic parameters so so I've used append in my example which means open the file for writing and go to the end of file and the documentation links give you a full explanation of the different parameters for file read I've used R for read and that's it and those are the at the bottom of the two program results they are identical showing the ease of which you can make the transition between SD writing, SD card writing and the internal flash memory spiffs reading and writing files. So these are the parameters that are available to you making the translation between SD card filing and spiffs filing. Read as, is as it says R, read for R open a text file for reading and the stream is positioned at the beginning of the file. That would be the normal mode for opening a file. Uh, read plus 
open a file for reading and writing, the stream is positioned at the beginning of the file to override existing content and so on down the various parameters. Um, so basically structured as reading and writing and various options therein. There are some differences to note between the two filing systems. So SPIFS is not a file allocation table filing system that you'd find on a Windows PC. File names are absolute. Um, they have to contain the full address of the file. So if you wanted to put a file into a directory called data, you have to prefix the file name with the directory name. Uh, in fact, in this SPIF system, directories are not implemented. Uh, but they are simulated and to all intents and purposes operate in exactly the same way. There is a command called SPIFS open directory. So if you issue that command and there I've given an example and I've called the directory data, it prefixes all subsequent commands with a data directory path if you like. So follow on commands just need to refer to in my example file name dot dat and they are read and written to a pseudo directory called data. File names are not case sensitive and uh, but they are limited to 32 characters one character of which is the literal zero character which is the end of file name marker so 31 usable characters for file name and the path. The system doesn't warn you that you've exceeded the um, file name size, so you need to make provision in your programs to control file name length and not exceed that. The flash memory has a limited life, write cycle life. You can read as many times as you like, but write about 10,000 times to any given location. It's an approximate value and it varies from device to device depending on the yield quality of the CPU substrate. Um, so there's the mantra, read many times, write as few times as you can. And I've given an example there of how long if you were doing some data logging of temperature and humidity, time and date at 10 minute intervals, it should last for many many years to come so it's not really a limitation if used in a practical situation. I think overall the SPIS filing system is more versatile than the SD filing system and if you look at that link for documentation there for SPIFs you'll see examples and uh, more detailed usage um, explanations. As usual, I've included three examples. If you're running the PowerPoint presentation I've produced, you can follow the links, but otherwise all the links to all the file examples are in the YouTube description below. And so the GitHub has examples of the SPI file uh, system repository, reading and writing to an SD card, reading and writing, the same program reading and writing to the SPIS filing system, then a combined example of reading and writing to both SD card and SPIFs at the same time, which is can be quite useful if you want to extend your filing system usage. Well, that's it, folks. I hope you enjoy this uh, short video uh, of explaining how to use the SPIFs filing system. It's very straightforward to use and uh, you shouldn't find any difficulty at all in implementation.